You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Yes. I wanted to do it again because it's Halloween. I just feel like doing it all Halloween. So I just want to do that accent. <laughs> it's creepy. You know, it's because Halloween's my favorite damn holiday. Is it a holiday? It's a holiday. Is it? No, it's just, a, it is. It just bums me out that I can't have people to the house to carve pumpkins and you you were at the last couple we won the last one yeah shut up I didn't, yeah you won the carving contest <laughs> i am the worst artist in history and i did not win i never even so it's for me it's fun because i just go i'm not gonna win this no one's gonna ever consider me i think i was yeah last every year uh but you know and then the haunted houses that we go to my friend john and a few other buddies and then um Universal Horror Nights can't really do that. We, we we can't do that. So it's like, fuck, what can we do? But you make the most of it. Like I do the horror zoom every week and I, you know, we watch horror movies and my friends are all in there commentating and sort of going, that's the worst effect ever. <laughs> and it's just fun. It's at least you feel like you have them. Uh, I want to thank everybody. We got a great, some great episodes. Uh, thanks for listening. Of course, follow the handles at inside of you podcast on instagram and facebook at inside you pod on the twitter love looking at the messages please subscribe um if this is your first time if you're uh, a Stephen and mel fan and you haven't subscribed to the podcast uh, listen to it and if you like it uh you know stick around for other ones subscribe you know how it goes i'm not gonna get into that it's like you either support me or you don't and if you choose not to you go to hell I'm just kidding. I don't really want you to go to hell. It's Halloween, so that's why I thought it was good. Uh, thanks to my patrons, my patrons. Uh, if you want to join the family, it's a, it's an amazing thing. I talk about it a lot, but uh, I, the support is overwhelming from the patrons. Uh, you get a lot of bonus material, and you get to ask questions to guests, and there's a bunch of tears and fun and YouTube lives, and it's just a big community, and so many friendships have spawned. Spawned? Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Are uh -huh. you spawned? And yeah, so if you want to go to Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash inside of you, uh, you could join. And I always write a message to new uh, joiners, <laughs> new members. I always do, dude, thanks, man. And I say Rosie. So it is me. I don't have somebody message. I don't you hate that when somebody goes, oh, thanks so much. And you're like, was that them? No, it's me. I respond to all of them. I send the merch. If you go on the uh, inside of you online store and it's wrapped shitty when you, when you get something like this awesome th uh, freaking Tumblr. I send it. And then when I see people go, oh, my autograph, because I get you can autograph them too. My autograph smeared. I'm like, I send it. I give him a new one. It's authentic. It is That's authentic. Then I, I send but another you, one to him. I don't give a you shit. You don't want to print it on there. You want it, you want the Sharpie to rub off. That's real. <laughs> I, I don't know how it did. I blew it. That didn't sound good at all. But I just I kept you know, and I, you know, and I thought it looked dry. <laughs> and uh, every once in a while. Was that a beer or was that a fresh, crispy, sparkling water? Cracking up with a cold one. Cracking up a cold one. You know, in this episode with Stephen Amell, uh, I also brought up Ryan's rap thing. What's it called again? <laughs> Recap raps. Recap raps. And Ryan did a while ago, and I was in one of them. I did a little thing where I, you know, Lex is chilling. But he does this rap for the Aero universe, like all the seasons or whatever like that. And I told Steve, Stephen Amell about it today. And he goes, yeah, I know that. I was going to post. And anyway, if you want to check that out, where could they go, Ryan? Uh, well, they're all on uh, the Warp Zone uh, YouTube channel. Uh, people who know me probably know about that. But what's funny is because uh, the first time I met S Stephen, I was going to bring it up because I, I, I had this whole rap. But because uh, there's OK, so there's a lot of seasons of Arrow. Right. There were a lot. And I hadn't seen one of them. So you had to watch an entire season. So in like when we two decided days. when we decided that was going to be the upload, I had to sort of find a way to condense six seasons of Arrow. And so I read a lot of blogs or like here are the 16 episodes you need to see. It's a lot of clips, read a lot of Wikipedia. Uh. And so basically, like in order to find a through line through it, the only through line I could find is that they do a lot of shots of Steven with his shirt off and working out. And so over the course of the rap, I thought it'd be funny to sort of slowly sort of drop the the machismo of being a rapper and sort of like <laughs> fall in love with Steve. So uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, but then when he came here to do the podcast, um, had he not had a panic attack, maybe we would have brought it up the first time. <laughs> right. The first episode, if you didn't hear of Steven and Mel before, he had a, had a panic, attack, panic attack on the show and had to leave early and then he came back and finished it. And one of the things I will say about Steven is, dude, if you're listening, thank you. 
because there's there are a certain amount of my uh, friends or you know, and I didn't know Stephen other than I met him at a, a convention, and but he did the podcast and then he did it again and then he asked to come back. He's just a, what I love is he's a, actually a fan of the podcast and he thinks it helps a lot of people and he thinks it's uh it's it's good and that means a lot to me. And one of my peers, one somebody that I I respect and the fact that he likes the podcast so. Today he had some really, you know, interesting news. He called me and said, "Hey man, I want to talk about it on your show." And I was like, "Wow, thank you." So when you hear this, this is, uh, you know, I commend him for being so uh, open and honest. And that's what we look for in the show. And I think the more people open up, and you know, somebody asked me, "How do you get people to open up?" And I go, "I think that you just you open up yourself." You know what? Ha- you know what happens is normally when I look at it when I'm writing notes is usually around like like 30, 40 minutes, right? that's when like like some like really big emotional stuff gets dropped. Really? It's usually around that time. Wow. I don't even, I didn't so even it, know that. It takes a little, you know, it takes a little greasing. There's no rhyme or reason. I, and I don't try to do that. I think it's just, it, it just happens. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes people are closed off a little bit. Most of the time people do open up. Kevin Smith last week. <laughs> he, he was an open book. That he was, was an was open great. book, but he really talked about the whole chasing Amy Lauren. Amy Lauren. What's her name? Lauren Adams? Lauren. Jo- yeah, Joey Lauren. Adams. Yeah. And that and that kind of got deep. And I was like, wow, I didn't know any of that. So uh, that was really intense. And, and uh, you know, so anyway, that's it. You guys know the handles, the store. Uh, Rosie Pants. The code is Rosie Pants 1 for 15% off the online store, a bunch of autographed mugs and tumblers and shirts and tank tops, flip-flops, wine glasses, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, go to Inside of You Online Store. And uh, thanks for supporting the show. Let's get into a very big episode. And thank you all for uh, joining me once again. Ryan, always a delight to have you, my man. Uh, let's get inside of Stephen Amell. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Dude, it, what, what background is that? It looks like you're in space. I'm in my guest bedroom. Have you heard of wall art? I'm laying against the head headrest of a bed. Oh, I see. It's very white. I kind of like this. It's very 2001 Space Odyssey. Was it 2001? Uh, are you, is that, was that a serious question? What? Are you really asking what your, uh, the movie... Blank year of space odyssey was well i questioned myself a lot so i was wondering later on they're gonna go uh that was 2021 what do you no it was 2001 it was a kubrick film yeah it was yeah kubrick yeah you, you've never met my buddy nick he's a giant kubrick fan and uh anytime i see him i always tell the same joke and it pisses him off every time i go Man, I've only seen one of his movies, and I don't know if I need to see any anything else. Have you seen Eyes Wide Shut? And be like, <laughs> you shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up, man. Hey, who finished that movie? Didn't he pass away and someone finished it? Was it Spielberg? Or did he make it through that one? I think he made it. No, I think he made it through that one, but he died before it premiered. Because I distinctly remember watching Entertainment Tonight or something of the like, and watching Goldie Hawn be very dramatic and just go, thank you, Stanley. Thank you. I don't know why I remember that, (laughs) but I do. Do you, would you act with a director that obviously let's see, say you didn't know he was that brilliant. You didn't know it was Stanley Kubrick. It wasn't like his third film or even second film, but this first guy and he's just, you know, and he just wants take after take and he's typing on the computer and he's typing new lines for a scene that you're going to shoot in two hours. Would you work like that? Or would you, would, how would you react to that? Well, I mean, if I didn't know, if I didn't know the person, I might get, I might get annoyed at a certain number of takes because I get annoyed at a certain number of takes. I was doing a short with my wife um, during the early part of the pandemic. And even, even with her in front of all of her friends, I'm like, She's like, let's do one more. I'm like, you got it. You, you, you got it. So from that standpoint, I, I don't like doing a ton of takes. So, it, but then again, if I was going into it with someone like who has the reputation of doing a lot of takes, like Fincher has the reputation for doing a lot of takes right. I've heard. Um, I, I sort of like set my expectation, but in terms of writing new lines, I don't care. My showrunner right now, Michael Malley is, 
um, on set all the time, which wasn't always going to be the case, but is, you know, is the case now because once you get to Atlanta, we can't really go anywhere. So he's there all the time. He's constantly writing new shit. Writing new shit for that. I love it. On that day. So I I actually did a table read for a script that he wrote years ago. And it was, oh, yeah? it was up the street. It was Michael Malley. It was at Scott Con name dropping Scott Con's house with me and Giovanni <laughs> Rabisi and Michael Malley. And we read a script that he'd written. It didn't come to fruition, but he was a super guy. And I knew him from New York, just a yeah. really baseball cap, fun loving guy. Um, and he, so he's writing lines for you on heels right now on the day that you're going to say later in the day. On the day. Yeah. Things are, you know, things are shifting around. Try this, say that. Let's try things this way. Um, also, our director, Pete Siegel, who's directed a ton of things, most notably from Tommy my perspective, Boy. Tom, Tommy Boy. Well, his wife's my dentist. He directed me in a pilot, and then the fucker promised me, he goes, if you do this pilot for me, Rosenbaum, I'll put you in my movies. And he never did. Listen to this. Funny story. So I'm, I'm, more, I'm Linda's, Linda's cleaning my teeth, his wife. He's the best dentist, I think, around. And you know, it's so Hollywood right now, but not, I'm telling the story. And uh, she's like, you know, you should definitely work with Pete. And I go, you know, there's there's, there's a couple of roles that he's doing in this uh, movie. It was at the time, it was like, I don't know what it was, longest yard at the time. I mean, it was years yeah. later. And I go, yeah, well, no, I don't, you know. He's like, she's like, what? I go, well, you know, Pete promised to put me in a movie after I did his pilot. He's like, what? I go, no, nah, I don't care. But I love Pete. He's a great guy. So listen to this. The next night, I'm out with some friends and all of a sudden I get a call and it's Pete. And I go, hey, Pete. He goes, Rosenbaum, hey man, listen, I'm out to dinner with my wife. I'm outside right now. Hey, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm like, wait, what? He's like, listen, no, no, I, I love you. I'm always thinking about you. And uh, Linda, I go, I was, oh, I was, I was totally kidding around with. I know, but she's, she, she thinks I'm an asshole because it was so funny. Oh, Pete, I love you. I, I didn't think that. I didn't think that. Either. He's such a sweet dude. Such a good dude. He's such a sweet dude. So easy to work with, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. He gets a little. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say impatient. At, at times, but he likes things to be done in a, in a, you know, in a, in a very, in a timely fashion in terms of setting things up, uh, communication with the crew. I can see every once in a while that he's getting a little, a little impatient or a little irritated, but certainly not, not, not in a bad way. He just wants it to be good. He want yes, but he also wants to have as much time as possible with the actors, right? He's not, he, he very much, once they block the scene, like he sits back and he lets the DP and, and everyone do their work and get set and set the shot. But then when the floor is his, he wants the floor to be his, which I totally respect. Are you someone who's like always, and we just jumped into this thing and I want to get into stuff, but do you, uh, you know, I think we all are as actors, but are usually like, if you got it, you got it. Or do you like, oh, I want another one. I need another one. I want another one. Do you do that? It totally depends. Not often, not, not often. Unless like, unless I have an instinct for something or, like, you know, on occasion, um, maybe my initial instinct is wrong. And then I get a note and I get it. And the director goes, all right, we got it. But I'm thinking to myself, that was really the first time that I did it that way. You know, I, I don't know if I was necessarily thinking everything through correctly. So maybe give me one more, but not that often. Not that often. How much of a departure is Arrow from this character? Obviously, you're a freaking wrestler and you're like, you know. You... Oh, man, it's so different and so cool. Um, getting to do an accent, which is cool. Let me hear the accent. No way. 100 no. <laughs> well, what is it? What kind of accent is it? Maybe I could try to do it. You could tell me if I'm close. A little southern, little George, little 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 Georgian, uh, little Georgia accent. All right. Uh, we've got a dialogue coach on set all the time, and and the only unnerving thing is that he's given me like two notes, and they very small corrections. I I really wish more. I really wish more. He's like, no, no, no. You go work on this word and this syntax, and you know, so on and so forth. Um, but he hasn't. And to Mike's credit, getting back to Michael Malley, there are certain words with the accent that just don't, do not feel right coming out of my mouth. Sure. So we just, we just change them. I mean, not, 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 not fundamental, like integral stuff, 
but just I don't know certain certain less words, more phrases just don't feel totally natural. So there's that aspect of it. Um, like let's change knucklehead. I don't want you to use the word knucklehead anymore. <laughs> don't sound like you doesn't sound like you're saying it right. So just say noggin. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, noggin. <laughs> uh, you know, the character's funny, um, or at least has funny moments, which is certainly a departure from certainly a departure from Arrow. Um, he's an adult, which is not. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that Oliver Queen wasn't, and certainly didn't 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 morph into one uh eventually but he definitely started i definitely started the show living in you know living in my you know bedroom that i grew up in you know in in, in my parents house so you know in in this instance my character's married has a young child um not even that not even that young um it, character plays eight um and you know he's in he's in charge of a lot of people so i don't know he's a little more grown up and I don't know. Just stylistically, uh, it's we, dirtier, are, we move isn't at it? a much we move at a much slower, slower pace in terms of page count, and 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 also just just the this this CW and and the way that we shot Arrow, which I loved, but a lot of it was a lot of it was very much paint by numbers. You're gonna get a master. You're you're gonna. You're gonna get a master. You're gonna get a fifty-fifty, and certainly in a scene between two people, you're gonna get two overs and a medium size and a closer size, and you're gonna do that in every scene. You know, whereas we've got a we've got a couple of scenes where you know we don't we don't do that. It's not they're not big, long sweeping oneers, but the camera doesn't have to always be on your face when you're talking. So that you have that as an option. In more the natural. Room. Feels a little more natural at times. It does feel a little bit more natural, which is, I think, just the basic difference between premium cable and and network television. Not a criticism, sure. but you know, just the way that it is. Yeah, we we did an interview a while ago, and uh-huh. uh, we we shit canned it, as some say. We just, mm-hmm. you know, you called me and you're like, "Hey, uh, we can't air it." Yeah. I was fine with it. I mean, like, oh, I was there. You think we could edit it? Maybe it's like, you're like, nah, I don't know. I think we should just kind of, no. we should, we should, we should, yeah, no, we just, we just, we just should get it. I, I didn't, <laughs> there wasn't anything, contra- there wasn't anything controversial about it. I just didn't know what I was supposed to, I didn't know what I was going to be allowed to say, um, about heels and, um, and just in general, and, and this is ironic. Um, there was a lot of nervousness around the production about perception and being one of the first productions to launch again, you know, in the midst of an ongoing fucking surging, frankly, pandemic. So, yeah. So, yeah, we just waited for a little bit. Now I feel more comfortable. Well, what a good segue. So, uh, you haven't told anybody, really. Oh uh, no, no, not publicly. No, I haven't shot in. I have not shot uh, heels in exactly three weeks today. I head back to work tomorrow. Uh, I tested positive for COVID nineteen. Uh, geez, uh, fifteen days ago, two weeks ago, Monday. Um, today being, I, I think this is airing next week, but today being Tuesday, October. Is it today? Right. October the twentieth. So maybe fifteen, fifteen days ago. So, and yeah. yeah, and and the thing is, is that I um, had already been um, I had already been isolated from work because uh, there was um, there was a positive test on the show, and I I repeatedly tested negative uh, through the week, um, but. But ultimately, for whatever reason, came down with symptoms the following Monday. Got tested on the Tuesday, and um, I've actually been cleared to go, go back to work since Friday, this past Friday. But they didn't know if I would be cleared for sure until basically this Wednesday. 
So they have been building other stuff into the schedule. So as a lead actor, you're getting tested on set every day or every they check. Well, they check your temperature, I believe, every day, right? When you arrive on set every day, you have your temperature taken. You can't just even if you're at the studio, obviously, when you drive into the studio, you get your temperature taken. Um, they scan your card. You have to have filled out a wellness report. Um, you know, have you had a fever? Do you have any of the following symptoms? Have you had exposure? Yada, yada, yada. And then you have your temperature taken. Um, and even when, you know, you're arriving at, you're arriving at base camp or something like that, when you're on location, someone's there to take your temperature. Um, um, this is all being done by a company out of Arkansas called CTEH. I think they're working actually on a number, a, a number of shows, not just ours. And they're excellent. They're excellent at uh, they're excellent at what they do. Did um, you have a fever one day, or, or or were you already experiencing something? Maybe the day before, you're like, ah, fuck. I woke up, and it was the strangest thing. My fucking right ear was plugged, and I was hot and cold. I never ran a fever. Um. It, I'd say that that I noticed something. I, I started to notice something on a Monday, but didn't have a didn't have a test result. Phoned up the people at CTAH, had them come to my apartment, test me. Came back positive the following Wednesday. Got tested again. Came back positive again. But frankly, at that point, I didn't need a second positive test. Because those first couple of days just really they they just they just sucked. Um, sucked how? I w- compared well, to like how you felt. Okay, so this it, it, in, interesting. Um, for two nights, I was up every couple of hours, vacillating between freezing cold and boiling hot, and I'd be freezing cold because I would sweat through all my stuff. But get up dry off, change my clothes, um, get back into bed, warm up and then start sweating again. And just like the cycle would just, the cycle would just, the cycle would just repeat. Um, and the biggest thing, and really I, I felt maybe the onset of, of a symptom or two on a Monday and then, by Friday, I was feeling great, but that that Tuesday, that Tuesday Wednesday, felt very, very much like I was in a fog, like I had vertigo, actually. Um, you know, if I got up too fast, uh, it, it, I I would get <clears throat> I would get super dizzy. I was just on the couch, just laying there, and I really had no appetite whatsoever. And when you don't have an appetite, after a certain point, your body basically, at, at least from my perspective, it goes into like starvation mode. So you want to eat, but it's a but it becomes about it becomes about the like the reintroduction of food, and you're like, what's it going to be? And I don't think I I don't think I ate anything until Wednesday or Thursday morning. And it was like plain pasta with olive oil and a bit of salt. Did you feel, did you feel like, it was like nothing. Did you sort of before, because like, I mean, you look at, you know, you're an amazing shape, work out, got it together, strong, blah, blah, blah. You know, they always say, be careful the, 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 the people who are, you know, pre-existing conditions which obviously that that's that could be deadly with you did you you really think you were ever going to get it were you one of those people like you think "Ah, i'm just not going to get it i'm not going to get this oh i I always knew that it was a possibility number one and i felt a great deal of pressure to not get it And, and this is something that i got into once i got a positive test um you know a lot of the a lot of the mental fear but to answer this to answer this question first i've always been really good about about mask wearing, about social distancing, um, just following the rules. You know, not going not going to a not going to a huge house party or 
or or concert or whatever you know eat, or, yeah or, or like super large super large gatherings where people aren't wearing masks but i haven't been i also haven't been totally afraid of it which i know certain which i know certain people are and certain people have the absolute right to be whether you have a pre-existing condition whether you're whether you're elderly um you know my mom is not elderly per se but um i think that she's a little frightened of it because you know she's had a me- she's had a medical history and you know you just don't know it's scary yeah, people are, people, yeah. people are dying for it from it uh for me honestly because it was called COVID, I've had to I've had to be where I've been for the past three weeks since the past. Well, I was actually released from quarantine this past Friday. But you quarantined to to be to, before you even get went on heels to start filming. You had to quarantine for two weeks once you landed in Atlanta, correct? I had to quarantine for two weeks once we landed in Canada because we went to Canada in the summer. When we got to Georgia, everyone has to self isolate for for five days. And then we get tested Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and these aren't rapid result tests, um, but I mean, you're getting them at, if you test positive, you're getting a phone call at, you know, six, seven o'clock the next morning. Otherwise you're just getting an email that says, you know, says negative. So then maybe there was a part of me that was starting to feel a little invincible because I mean, by the time I test a positive, we're looking at, Gosh, 40 negative tests. And what are you doing point? in this time? You're just on set. You're not going gallivating, gallivanting around. You're not. No. Uh, you, right. So who'd you get it from? Do you have an idea of who gave it to you? No, I don't. Um, I have absolutely no idea how it happened. Um, you know, I was, I was out for dinner uh, in Georgia, but I, I, you know, I did, I did my own contact tracing on that one and I'm not finding any, not finding any evidence that, you know, it happened, it happened you know, then and there. Is there a relief to it? So, Is there a relief that you have it? And you're just like, now I have the antibodies and now it's almost like, Oh, there's, because here's well, also the, yeah. there is now, except there wasn't when it happened. The, 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 the most difficult part about it, and one of the reasons that I want to talk about it right now is is what whether or not you're you're frightened of it. There is a lot of fear mongering going on about it, and there's a lot of there's a lot of conjecture, and there's a lot of people that are you know basically try, trying to scare the shit out of you a little bit because when it happened and when I got the positive test, for me it became holy fuck, I just destroyed this show because I'm number one on the call sheet and I work every day, give or more or less. It's like four and a half days a week on this first block that we were shooting. And I'm in my head going, shit, they're going to have to shut down the production. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're not yet done the first block of two episodes. Um, you know, did I just... Did, did I just ruin this? That's the first thing you're thinking of. Not, am I going to die? No, no, I, no, I wasn't worried about that. There is a, the, there is a little bit of a, a mental struggle because one of the things you hear about is you hear about the, you hear that the symptoms can be mild at the start. You can feel better. And then there's a relapse and things come back. And when they come back, they come back worse than before. Um, you know, thankfully that, that didn't happen to me, but it's, there's a real malaise that sets in and a real boredom because I'm down here in Georgia. I'm solo. What the fuck am I supposed to do? I had to What can you do? There's nothing to do. They tell you, I asked my doctor, can I exercise? Not recommended. 
Until when? Until you've been symptom-free for 72 to 96 hours. Really? Yes, really. So in those first, in that first bit of time when I was isolated and, and kept testing negative, obviously you're not exercising. And then you find you get a positive test um, and you're not exercising. And then you spend almost a week symptom free. You're not exercising. So you're just, frankly, resting, how, sleeping. How, 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 resting, sleeping. How much, how much weight did you lose? 15 pounds. 15 pounds and how long? Um, how long of time? Three weeks. Three weeks, 15 pounds. Now, that's obviously an issue when you look on camera, if they're shooting stuff, unless they're going to shoot you in clothes and things, right? Yeah. One, of the, one of the great things about Mike O'Malley is they, when they told me that I was coming back um, then my first day of work was going to be Wednesday, just tomorrow. We we were supposed to start. Uh, we were supposed to start in the wrestling ring, and I was speaking with the production, and I I, I just said to them, I go, guys, this is this is a non-starter. This this is this is a worst case scenario for me. I haven't been able to do anything. I until I get back into the gym, which was yesterday, I go, I don't know if I have residual uh, it, residual impact um, in terms of lung capacity or anything like that, because you hear about that. I don't know what the lingering effects are because you know, when you get sick, when you start to feel better, you are not aware of how hard your body is working to make you feel better until you try to do something other than just sit around and feel normal. It's that first time when you go and do something, we're like, oh shit, 98% of my body's energy right now is going into just keeping me at level. And so I was nervous when I got back in the gym the other day, but Mike, Mike fixed it up and I've got a good, I've got a good 10 days to be back in the gym. And one of the things that I'm hoping, and one of the things that I've, I've really seen already is that I've been training like a motherfucker. Like I had been in the gym, uh, five days a week in a home, in my home gym, usually on, on the Saturday or the Sunday doing really, really good workouts, mixing it in with shooting and, and being active and eating well. And so what you're hoping is that, you know, you're, you're a balloon that deflated just a little bit, but then hopefully you're going to get you're blown. Just gonna blow back up. Um, which is good. I feel good. Uh, I worked out early this morning and, um, it was leg day. It sucked, but how long does it take to get back 15 pounds? You can, in 10 days, you're not going to get 15 pounds, but you might get five back. I'll probably get like 10 back. I really will. So you're eating like crazy and working out eating like crazy, but eating healthy. I'm eating cause I need, I'm eating cause I need calories. These are, these workouts are like an hour and 45 minutes and, Jesus. um, and, and they're, they're heavy. Like we're, we're, we're going, we're going pretty heavy with stuff because I really wanted to be thick and strong and not necessarily, you know, look sort of paper, paper thin and all cut. And like, I, like I'm you know, trying to win a, uh, you know, a, a definition competition as opposed to, um, look like, look a like I can body slam, you know, James Harrison on our cast who's <laughs> 285 pounds. Inside of You is brought to you by Mac Weldon. I'm wearing a Mac Weldon shirt right now. Tell me this isn't an awesome shirt, Ryan. It looks really comfortable. I'm telling you, it's... it's Like for it's, a polo shirt? Dude, yeah. it's like almost like a mesh, and you can't even see it, so it's got... I mean, you're not going to get the B.O. It's so comfortable and classy. I hate the B.O. I hate the B.O. But I'll, I'll tell you what, man. I, uh, I don't... As you know, if you watch the show, I wear T-shirts. I This... It's classy 
I can go to like a dinner. It's, I'm not overdressed, but guess what? It feels kind of like a t-shirt. It's so comfortable. I can't even explain it. So uh, I'm really excited about my Mack Weldon. They gave me a little uh, coupon oh. for some Mack Weldon. So I ordered some stuff. I'm wearing the socks right now. I, I got to say, this is, uh, some of the, this is the most comfortable stuff I've worn. I mean, this is incredible. I, I promise you... Just the shirt, this shirt alone. And I got these sweatpants that just, I want to sleep in them. Mack Weldon is a premium men's essentials brand that believes in smart designs and high quality fabrics. Mack Weldon offers a one-stop shop for men's basics, socks, shirts, hoodies, underwear, polos, and active shorts, whatever you need. And what I like about these guys is you don't go to some place and uh, there's 5,000 products. They are very particular. They've got a sel nice selection, but it's not overwhelming. It's just what in, what I need and probably what you need. Unlike the assortment of department store brands that make up your top drawer, all of Mack Weldon's basics have a consistent fit that you can count on. From working out to going on a date to doing a podcast, Mack Weldon has you covered. Also, what I love is Mack Weldon has uh, created a totally free loyalty program. Level one gets you free shipping for life. Once you've reached level two, by spending $200, Mack Weldon gives you 20% off every order for the next year. Mack Weldon wants you to be comfortable. So if you don't like the first pair of underwear, you can keep and they'll still refund you. No questions asked. Do I have to show you my underwear? I, you don't, uh, no, you don't have to do but that. But I'm wearing them and I, mean, I want you to I see. I mean, that's, that's cool. Okay, you believe That's cool. me. I believe you. Listen, if nothing else, get this shirt and get the underwear and tell me, honestly, if you tell me, if I read messages like you're a liar, I will, I'll send you something. These are freaking comfortable. They're liars. If they, these things, Ryan, I'm going to give you a pair of my underwear. Okay. No, I'm going to get you a pair. An unclean pair? I'm going to get you a clean pair of okay. Mac Weldon. <laughs> For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash I-O-U and enter promo code I-O-U. That's right, Ryan. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon, M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com slash I-O-U and enter promo code I-O-U. Inside of You is brought to you by Nutrafol. You know, I was bald as Lex Luthor for seven years and... um you know, they shaved my head for a roll, but my hair grew back. Well, some people don't have that luck that their hair grows back, right? And uh, I have a lot of friends, many friends that have been losing their hair and, you know, some are embarrassed about it. Oh, first of all, you shouldn't be embarrassed about it. And there's so many things you can do. And when the biggest thing you can do is get some Nutrafol. And uh, I just gave my friend Tom and my friend Joe some. And I was like, hey, if you could take something that works, and why wouldn't you, you know, I, you know, there's all these things that they, people put in their hairs and, uh, in their hairs. Mm -hmm. Nutrafol offers two targeted formulas that are clinically shown to improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding through all stages of life. Uh, it's so easy in a clinical study, actually 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. More than 1500 top doctors recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high quality solution for healthier hair. You know, you could also visit Nutrafol.com and take their hair wellness quiz for personalized product recommendations that are unique to your hair's needs. That's important, that's very easy. Just go to Nutrafol.com. Uh, Nutrafol is a physician formulated to be 100% drug free. That is something you should really know. A lot of these things are not that great for you. Uh, Nutrafol uses medical grade botanicals, in consistently effective dosages so you get the most reliable results. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting the five root causes of thinning, stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism. When you subscribe, you'll receive automatic monthly deliveries so you never miss a dose. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and using promo code INSIDE. And new customers will get 20% off. This is their best offer available anywhere. Plus free shipping on every order. 20% off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code INSIDE. Use something that works. Nutrafol. Hey, let me ask you, do you feel like part of your rather quick recovery, even though it wasn't, I mean, it was, you know, 
Do you think it's because how great of shape you were, how your heart was working so well, every, your lung capacity, all these things that made your recovery easier? Because someone that doesn't work out like you, doesn't have your build, doesn't have your lung capacity, doesn't have your heart, and they got it, do you think there's a possibility that they could have had it much, much worse? Yes, 100%. Um, I'm, I've watched Real Time with Bill Maher for ever. I mean, I, that, since it since it was uh, politically, was it politically incorrect before it was, I mean, he's been on the, I've been watching him right. for 20 years. And and one of the things that he's he's you know constantly been talking about that 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 people haven't been really talking about as much is look you might get it but and and you can't always prevent getting it which I'm here to tell you you can't always prevent yourself from getting it try though you might um, you know I'm not the first one of of my friends or people that I know that have been uber careful and, and still got it. But at the same time, I don't think people are talking enough about, you know, what you can do with your body and your diet to prepare yourself for the possibility that this might happen to you. And, you know, that I'm not a doctor, obviously I don't even play one on TV, but (laughs) I would be amazed if being in really good physical condition didn't work in my favor. Of course. I mean, you'd think that it would have to, right? The reality is that no one, no one does that though. Few people will do few, Very few people are going to listen to this conversation and go, Oh, I'm going to start working out and getting real healthy. They're just not going to do it. People, well, people. I think, I yeah. think, I think honestly, in, maybe not exercising your body a lot of what a lot of what bill mar talks about is like what do you put into your body you know or what kind of food do you eat what sort of level of nutrition are you trying to trying to maintain um yeah you know i'm it, it's not that we need to put a bow on this but anyone that thinks that this thing is a hoax is out of their fucking minds it's not um i've seen it affect people recently uh really badly uh, relative to me with with real with no real rhyme or reason to 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 when it hit you um how it hit you how long it lasts um and you know i also know people recently who have tested positive that are completely asymptomatic and it, and it was nothing to me if this wasn't called if this wasn't called COVID-19, I wouldn't have missed a day of work. I would have felt shitty on a couple of the days, but I, I, I would not have missed a day of work. I, I, I have gone to work feeling worse than, than I did. But you know, then all you're dealing with is you're dealing with, you're dealing with a flu or you're feeling really run down or you're, you're injured from a stunt or something, or, you know, I have dealt with, Right. debilitating back pain that has made me nauseous and, and stuff like that. But this is, this is, this is serious business. And, well, you know, yeah. Well, you know why? And should, should be taken seriously. Well, not only that, because it's not about you're going to recover. It's going to be fine. The reality is you just don't know how each person is going to recover. And yeah. I don't care how healthy you look, you know, I, God forbid, I, you know, I, I get it. And it would suck. And but but this fear is I, I, I may feel seem healthy, feel healthy, but maybe I have something that my body just doesn't I have a really bad recovery, or yeah. if it, you know, if I don't recover. So that's kind of the fear. Most people recover from the flu. Yep. Yeah. But you know what the hardest part for me, it seems like, you know, being alone, like being sick in your house all those days and no one wants to be around you, and being isolated and sweating through your clothes and then putting new clothes on and then like it's like, fuck, you want the support. I mean, were these like moments where you're like, God, I wish my wife was right here. Yeah. Yeah. It was really difficult because um, the, the, the day that I got tested was the day that, um, that my daughter was going to come and join me down in, down in Georgia. And, uh, you know, to have to delay that 
which meant that um, she didn't actually get to come down here until after her birthday while I isolated. And so there's a real, there's a real mental, there's a real mental game that goes into this, this isolation. And, and it's, it's just, it's, it's not a, it's not a whole heck of a lot of, a lot of fun because, you know, your mind starts playing, your mind starts playing tricks with you and, you know, you get a nice call from Michael Malley and you get a nice call from Pete Siegel and you get a nice call from, from Jeff Hirsch at stars who just says, you know, um, sorry, there's a piece of fluff in front of me there who just says, hey, he called me up and he was like, Mr. Amell. I said, Mr. Hirsch, how are you? And he goes, don't worry about me. How are you? And I go, I'm fine. He goes, all right. Okay. You feeling okay? Yes. Is there anything that we can do for you? If there is, I will tell you. And he goes, hey, if you get bored, you ever want to call and just talk about the, the you know, talk about the Patriots or something like that, <laughs> uh, give, give, you know, give me a call. You have my number. And that took away the, the, the fear and the, and the real anxiety that I've, I've just gone and cost a lot of people their jobs, but you know, it only lasts so long and it happens on like day one or day two of isolation. And then, you know, and then you're just kind of left with your thoughts. I kind of wish there was like a, a COVID nurse. He's like, she's like, I, I'm asymptomatic. I have, you know, or I have the antibodies. I could become your yeah. nurse and come over to your house. I, I think I'd be like day one, like, oh, you're, you're COVID. You have to isolate for the next whatever. I'd be on the phone in the yellow. Pa- well, we don't have the yellow pages anymore. But I'd have my uh, Thomas guy. No, I'm kidding. I have my phone. And I'd be like, uh, yeah, hey, uh, I'd pay someone, whatever it is, man, just to come hang with me. Be in the other room. <laughs> yell at me every once in a while. Maybe leave soup uh, at my door. Like, I don't know. Being, like, like, when you're sick. There is nothing fucking worse than being alone and like you don't have the energy to get my eating in them off. Am I doing the right thing? Should I take two fucking Tylenol? Do I take what do yeah. I? I mean, you seem like you get your you have your shit together, so you're not. I'll tell you what I really wanted. I really wanted some weed gummies. That's what I really wanted. <laughs> that would help, right? We kind of... I thought about that. Like in my head, I'm like, what do I? What do I? What do I really feel like? Yep, yep. I feel like weed gummies. I, I want something to, at, at first it was like, nah, cause I wanted to, to really, you know, shake up my appetite. And then it was more like, you know, maybe it'll help me sleep. Cause I don't mess with anything, really anything to do with sleep, be it like Xanax or whatever. I don't, I don't ever mess with I anything to that. do with, yeah. to do with sleep. Yeah. I was doing that way back and I just, that, that, that just, that's artificial sleep. Yeah, it wasn't good for yeah. I, I I think I took one. Um, one I took a pretty powerful painkiller one time. Um, Tramazodone. I don't. I can't. I legitimately can't remember. Right. Um, and uh, maybe Vicodin. Well, What's Vicodin? Good. Vicodin. Yeah, that could do. Norco. A Norco. Percocet. It might have been a Percocet. <laughs> it might have been like half a Percocet. Oh, perc. When I was dealing with really bad back pain. And I just never again, ever. It was like, it was trying to shut my body down, but my body didn't want, it was ugh, yuck. Yeah. I didn't like it. So, um, did anybody yeah. get it from you? Did anybody get it from you on set? Like you were positive. Do you think the makeup artist was like, uh Oh, I touched his hair. Not on, certainly not on set. So not nobody on set. set after you, uh, tested positive. No one on set was known to test positive. So that's a good mm-hmm. feeling. At least you didn't, right? Mm-hmm. Not that it'd be your fault. But. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, it, there are, there are, we don't know if, if uh, I had some friends, um, you know, who, who have tested positive and frankly, no one knows, no one knows uh, who did it and how it happened. And, uh, the truth of the matter is that it absolutely positively could have been me. And so there was that aspect of it as well, because, uh, 
not everyone had such a mild experience. Everyone's okay, but not everyone had such a mild experience. And that just, you know, that just rips you apart thinking that, that, that you might be responsible for something like that. And, uh, that I'd say that that was one of the toughest parts, but that, you know, that, that would be, that would be selfish. I shouldn't be thinking about me. I should be thinking about them, especially when I'm having an easier time with it. But, um, you don't know, you don't know. And so it, it, it it all becomes about, it doesn't matter how you feel about COVID. The fact remains, it's a real fucking thing. It can get really bad for people. And you don't have to be brazen or be dickish about it. But if you're not considerate enough in the presence of other people to just haphazardly um, be a super spreader, because no one knows what makes someone a super spreader. and uh, and nobody knows if they are one because some people who are super spenders are asymptomatic. So you have to think about community and you have to think about how it might affect other people. I mean, I'm incredibly fortunate that if, if I have to go into isolation, I have a job waiting for me on the other side. Again, thank you very much to stars for being so you know, supportive and what they did over the past three weeks, the show didn't shut down for one day. What they were able to do is mind boggling, quite frankly, and uh, just goes to show that they were prepared for it. But uh, not everyone has the luxury of, of taking two weeks off. In fact, most, most, most people don't. Mm. We are in the midst of a global pandemic and, you know, times are tough for a whole lot of people. And so, you know, it's just, it, it, there's actually part of me that like thinks to myself, fuck, you know, I almost wish that I could, that I could know if it was me because, I, you know, maybe that would make me feel better. Maybe it would make other people feel better having someone to, to point a finger at if they want to. You know, if they, if, if that puts their mind at ease, if they want to tell me to go fuck myself, if, if it just, if it just, you know, puts a bow on this happened and here's how. But yeah, but I think, um, you know, you got it. Look, you're, you're responsible people. We're not perfect. So for the people who yeah. actually wear masks and I get food delivered and I try to wash my hands or put alcohol in my hands yeah. and I, I go outside in the back with three friends spread out or I'll go. You know, I'll do certain things. I'm not going to shut my life down completely, and the world needs to move on, right? However, as long as we could just respect other people, and that's, that's why exactly the math, right. and that's what it's about. It's never about control, and I'm not going to. I just, I don't, I don't know why it's gotten blown out of proportion. It's like, oh, because they don't know what we know. It's real. We know people die from it. We know some people get really sick, even if you seem to be healthy. We know all these things. It's, it's talked about too much, maybe not too yeah. much, but. All it is is respect. Just, just fucking do it. Just fucking go yeah. into Walmart and, with a mask on. Yeah, that's it. We're not telling you to do anything. We're not telling you to fucking believe in this God or this. Just, to just go in. So you don't. I'm, I mean, yeah. it's. It, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one. And I, I think I was, I was, I was saying earlier. Um, you know, I've, I've. I, there is, there was an element of me that thought, you know, Jesus, I, I'm, I've been tested probably more than 99.9% of the population. I keep coming back negative. I'm in excellent health. I rarely get sick. I'm well, immune. I fuck, I, you know, you're not all the way there, but I'm wrong. I fucking got it. And it sucked. And that being said, you know, I wasn't at the level of, uh, we're not leaving our house. That's it. Um, waiting for a vaccine. I very much believed that, I very much believe that l life needs to go on. My wife and I traveled during the pandemic. We traveled, we traveled, traveled with our daughters. We, you know, saw people on a regular basis, knowing, uh, knowing that they, knowing that they had been 
uh, tested. Um, and you wore masks and you were safe. And and you wear masks and we and we go and we meet outside. And um, I have a lot of friends who aren't even, you know, who aren't even comfortable with that. And, um, you know, that's that's perfectly fine. I do think I do think that life needs to move on a little bit. But that doesn't one thing doesn't need to stop you from doing right. Stop you from doing the other. If that, anything, yeah. in the, in, if anything, in the aftermath of this, I am going to be more uh, more stringent in terms of always making sure that I have a mask on at all times, unless I am to my destination. Right? Like you don't need. I don't need to fucking wear one in a car. But the minute that I get out and I do something, right. put a mask on. Right? When you're in an airport, you're on a plane, you put a mask on. Uh, it, it just you just just wear a mask. I'm actually, yeah. quite frankly, really astounded, based off of not knowing what I was coming into, how respectful everyone in the area of Georgia that I'm living uh, is 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 being. But and, and to and you know, we've had I think ultimately uh, three positive tests on our show. Um, one during production, two, well, two, my, myself included, uh, during production, and one in a very early part of pre-production. But you're dealing with hundreds of crew members. Um, I've done scenes with, uh, I've done scenes thus far with um, a lot of background performers. Have you kissed uh, anyone? In, Did you have to kiss anyone? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm married. I've married on the show. Um, and, uh, yeah. And our wrestling scenes, the first wrestling scene, apparently they had like 80, 90 extras in there. Every single one of them is being tested. Every single crew member, or certainly most of them are, are going home to their families. Um, and you know, they're not going through the same protocols that were, that we're going through. They're spending all, all fucking day, every day. If you're not an actor on the show, you are wearing a KN95 mask, period, full stop. That's it. Right. Which tell you the upside of that people write their names on them. So I learned everyone's name really, really fast. From their mouth. That's it good. Says, it, Cause it says their name on their mouth. <laughs> yeah. I, it, was a, it was a suggestion of Michael Malley actually. Yeah. And, it, and it was great, but um, once we're done the podcast today, actually, I'm going to get a haircut and to shave because I haven't done either one of those things in three weeks. And I'm really excited to see the crew again. I mean, we were just, we were just getting started a, into, into a rhythm, yeah, you know, sure. and, and then all of a sudden it just blew up. But on the positive side, I don't know that I'm now immune. I don't even know, frankly, how the whole antibody aspect of it works. Um, I do know that there's a possibility that I could test positive for another 90 days. I don't know if you knew. Did you, I don't know if you know the science behind this, but you can. There's such a thing as what they call it. It's a really unfortunate expression. It's called viral load. And um, it's measured between zero and 50. Um, zero is the worst, which I, uh, is counterintuitive. But once you get above 40, you will still probably test positive, but you're no longer contagious. You're, you're expelling dead virus, right. basically. Shedding, and, viral shedding? Or maybe viral that. shedding, that's right. <laughs> and that can last for a really long time. So, um, you know, on the show right now, uh, certainly for the next, for the next little bit, um, having, having gone through, having gone through the symptoms, having gone through a positive test, having gone through, uh, my, my period of quarantine and having been asymptomatic, um, you know, now for, for well over, well over a week, um, I, I don't actually get tested for the next for the next little while because if i test positive that 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 flags me and then you have to get through the contact tracing again and um you know um my buddy michael rooker 
actor. Uh, you know, yeah. Henry Porsche was Circular Guardians of the Galaxy. So I, I FaceTimed him one day. He's like, hey, buddy. I'm like, where are you? He's like, I'm in my trailer in the backyard. I'm like, what? He's in his Airstream. And I'm like, he's like, I got the COVID. And, you know, he's in the, and his, and his wife's like putting meals in front of his fucking trailer. And, uh, and I'm like, how is it? Well, oh my God, I'm sorry. And he's like, some days you feel like you're getting better. And the next day he's like a fucking elephant on your chest, man. And it fucking hurts. It's kind of, he felt, yeah. you know, he, I definitely could tell he, he was, it was like, you know, you get a high fever, then it feels like it's going away. And like, he, he had it pretty rough. And, um, just by talking to him, I could tell him it was, it was a shitty situation. And, uh, so, and then I've had some other friends from, you know, a friend in Nashville. She says it was brutal. Some people get through again, like you said, you never know how you're going to react. So Steven strong and he worked, you know, his lungs and all this and, 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 you know, it sucked, but he's getting through it. Now, someone like, uh, you know, someone that gets it, who gets sick often might fall apart. We just, we just don't know. Um, you just don't know. You just don't know. You just um, don't know. Last time you said something about before you were going to do heels, but you didn't know if the heels was going to happen and the pandemic and all this, all this things, the things that were happening right now, you're doing heels. You're in the show. Uh, an idea came to you that maybe, you know, I don't know. I consider, uh, <laughs> I consider as another season arrow. Maybe, I don't know. It was just kind of the back of your yeah. mind. Right. You said that. Yeah, I did. And it was, I, I phoned, uh, I phoned Greg Berlanti about it. I mean, it's not a, it, it, from my perspective, it wasn't a far fetched thing. This was, this was in, um, early July. Um, there was a plan to go back to heels in late August, but this was also during the, the summer surge that was happening in the States where they hit where they hit daily highs, like only to be eclipsed by the daily highs that, that we're about to hit now. Uh, I had just gotten to, I had just gotten to Canada. I was quarantining. It, it's, you know, I'm back in British Columbia. It feels so familiar after eight years of shooting arrow. And I'm also, you know, looking around at the fact that, you know, Canada has seen a, 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 a bit of a, yeah, you know, a bit of a bump up in in cases, which I think was you know is to be expected. Expected, but I mean, the, the numbers, relatively speaking, are, are still so incredibly low, and were even lower at the time. I mean, in British Columbia, you're looking at you're looking at like less than a hundred cases a day, and and almost all of them, believe it or not, were confined to retirement facilities and uh, prisons. Almost all of them. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, if everything goes to shit, um, why don't we just do another season of Arrow? Because <laughs> I want to work. Yeah. So I called Greg up and I said just that. I said, look, I, I hope this doesn't happen. But if everything goes to shit and you guys can't get actors up here because of, you know, issues about mostly American actors crossing into Canada. Um, and if, and if things can't be, if things can't be figured out, um, here's the deal, man, I'm here. And if I have to stay here, I want to work. If I'm going to work, let's, let's just figure out a way to bring all of her back and, from the dead. And what did Berlanti say? He's like, are you serious? Yeah. He goes, are you serious? And I go, yeah, of course I'm fucking serious. Again, I hope it doesn't happen, but I mean, can we at least put it like on the radar? And he goes, "Yeah, of course." You know, fan, Why not? you know, fans are right now thinking, you know, big Arrow fans who hopefully you'll watch Heels because it sounds like it's going to be yeah. a badass show. You got a great director, great writer. You got fucking Steven. It's wrestling. It's going to be fucking powerhouse fun. I can tell you that. I'll be watching that shit. But um, hearing you say that, they're thinking. Well, let's say this heel show goes for five seasons. Maybe, maybe they do a special <laughs> season of Era five years from now. I, they're going to have their hopes, but but hey, you never know. You don't. We don't know uh, what happens tomorrow, so you, you can't say you never no. Know, man, and hey, hey, listen, and I've I've always made a point of never saying. I've always made a point of never saying never. And as a matter of fact, when I found out that um, uh, Michael C. Hall was coming back for a limited run, Dexter as Dexter, I retweeted the article. And uh, despite what despite what our, our president said, a, a retweet is an endorsement. Uh, 
and I retweeted that article and I just said, this is why you never say never. And oh, it got a what bit does he of, mean by it that? It's of, so cryptic. It got, of, being... <laughs> got a bit of traction. Uh, no, you don't have to, you don't have to cut that man. I was a little nervous about that when I said it, just because I hadn't, like I hadn't even started exactly. on yet when, when we spoke and, um, but uh, no, I've, I've started now and I'm more confident, more confident than ever that um, I'm more confident than ever that we're going to be able to, to push through because, um, you know, we, we, we've only had those two positive, positive tests, but we lost other casts to, um, to, to having to self, uh, to having to self isolate, right. um, for, for various reasons. So the fact that we've been able to, uh, the fact that we've been able to make it through without a stoppage is, is remarkable. And again, a testament to everybody's hard work. Inside of You is brought to you by NHTSA. Ryan, I don't know how many times have you been, in a, you know, you're at the railroad crossing and you're just yeah. like, shoot, man, if I don't make this train, it's going to be a 20 minutes, 10 minutes. I've got to go. I've got to. And then every once in a while you hear about these tragedies that happen. Yeah. I've seen them. I've seen these tragedies. You can go online and watch this stuff because people are in a rush. You see the horror stories where all of a sudden their car just dies right in the middle of the tracks. I don't know how. It's just terrifying. It's like, why put yourself in that? Isn't your life more important than getting, you know, saving 10 minutes? It is. We forget that, the simple things. It can be a little frustrating, especially if you're in a hurry or running late to find yourself at a railway crossing waiting for a train. And if the signals are going and the train's not even there yet, you may feel a little tempted, like we just talked about, to try and sneak across the tracks. Well, don't. Ever. To the naked eye, trains often appear further away and moving slower than they are, and they can't stop quickly. Even if the engineer hits the emergency brake right away, it can take a train over a mile to stop, over a mile to stop, and by that time, it's too late, and the result is a potentially deadly crash. The point is, you can't know how quickly the train will arrive. The train can't stop quickly. Even if it sees you, it ends in disaster. If the signal's on, the train is on its way, and you just need to remember one thing. Stop trains can't inside of you is brought to you by theragun ryan i have all of their models so far i've been a fan of theragun since since the beginning you know obviously i talk about anxiety and i get anxiety and what, what does anxiety do it causes tension in your body right there's no doubt that when you're anxious or stressed out you just you just feel it you feel it all over your body and so you know when i use this thing it just alleviates that for me it works for me it just takes that tension away and that's something uh that is required. It's essential in my life. I, I really love this product. And you know, you know, the, the stress of daily life and you know, it just wears on you. And um, I'm full of stress and anxiety and muscle tension. And you know, for me to sit in a room for like 20, 30 minutes and just like, you know, just hit these points that I'm tense just for a couple minutes at a time and just unwind is something that's essential to me and someone who has dealt with a lot of stuff like this i think i'm a pretty good uh would you say the words advocate oh yeah for oh, the yeah. Uh, for the product so I'm, I'm thrilled that theragun is a sponsor and uh, i know you're gonna love these guys if you haven't used one you've got to use them whether you're an elite athlete or just a regular person trying to get through the day muscle pains and muscle tension is a real thing ryan do you experience that yeah you seem like you're tense yeah no no i'm an elite athlete what do you mean yeah, well, maybe I'll uh, let you use my Theragun right after this. I actually wouldn't mind that. Well, you know what the good thing about now is like, you know, uh, a lot of these other devices, it sounds like there's a lawnmower in the other room and you're on a plane and it's... And then, yeah, that's how they sound. Mm -hmm. And it's just so loud. And uh, now they have, Theragun's got one that's just like a, it's, it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. It's oh. pretty... Pretty phenomenal. These are all the reasons why I, I use Theragun, the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combination of depth, speed, and power. And now, like I said, as quiet as an electric toothbrush. That's because the all new Gen 4 Theragun has a proprietary brushless motor that's so quiet, you'll wonder if it's even on while you soothe your aching muscles with Theragun's signature power, amplitude, and effectiveness. I know you guys know that I'm telling you 
the facts and you're going to love this device. Try Theragun for 30 days. There is no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4 with an OLED screen, personalized Theragun app, and the quiet and power you need starting at only one hundred and ninety nine dollars go to theragun.com slash inside right now and get your gen 4 theragun today that's theragun.com slash inside theragun.com slash inside i promise you you're gonna love this thing you know quickly about this because i saw you what was it wwe you did something a couple years ago where you you wrestled and i've seen it and well, who'd you wrestle against? I wrestled twice. I wrestled in a tag match against uh, my buddy Cody Rhodes and um, uh, Wade Barrett and Neville. And then I did a singles match in what has become AEW against uh, Christopher Daniels. Okay, so I saw one of those. It was a tag team. And you yeah. were flying off the fucking ropes. I don't know how uh, Warner Brothers, CW, didn't go, what the fuck's don't... So my question is, are we going to see things that are similar in this wrestling show? And also, are is the creator, is O'Malley and, and Pete Siegel, are they kind of in this, in Hirsch, what's the guy's name, the guy who runs the... Well, Jeff Hirsch runs, runs. I, I don't know if Jeff is a, is a wrestling fan. But I'm just not. saying, are they... Are are they are, becomes one. But I'm just saying, are they going to be like, all right, well, you can't do this stunt. You can't do that. We're not allowing you to do this. Like, Guys, I could do this. I've done this. Let me do this. We haven't pushed up against that as yet. You will. Um, I, know I you. can see pushing the envelope and eventually having them having them push back. I suppose, but I know we it. are gonna we are gonna see stuff like that. That look, we stars in in one of the stages. Um, I guess what in one of the stages that we have in Atlanta, um, they took an entire stage, entire sound stage, and they built us a gym called the heels gymnasium Had a great guy scott who's who's running the training uh there has been a stunt guy a uh, long time um you know it did a bunch of um uh did a bunch of uh did a bunch of the marvel movies uh and then we have luke on the other side of the stage where we have an official wrestling ring and I get all that, Stephen. I'm saying, yeah. is Stephen going to say, let me fucking do that? And they're going to be like, no, you can't. You're like, I can do Is there going to be those moments on set where you're like, I want to do this? Uh, I, if if my career as an actor, when it comes to uh, wanting to wanting to push the envelope and do stunts is any indication that that conversation will probably happen relatively soon. All right. That's what I was waiting for. All right. This shit talking with <laughs> Mel. I knew it was coming. I just thought that was a short answer. Uh, shit talking. Um, Danielle, what is the funniest thing that ever happened to you on a set? Something that you remember where you couldn't stop laughing where you're just like, holy shit, this is the best. Maybe the first time that I ripped my pants. <laughs> Oliver every year on Arrow would have to fight in a suit at some point. And I think every year for the first three or four years, I ripped my suit. And I mean, like from, I mean, like from, from tip to tail naked in, ass in, cheeks in the crotch. Just, yeah. And it's just, it's just funny just cause it, you know, it would, again, it was like it happened, it would happen really aggressively and um, everyone will get a good kick out of it. Especially me. Steph A. I'm sure you miss everyone from the CW, but is there anyone in particular that you miss more than anyone else that you could think of when you go back to set that one person? Like I just miss seeing that face. I want to, I can't, I miss that person. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've gotten to I've gotten to see Emily a few times since we've wrapped, but I don't think that I've seen David Ramsey in like a year almost since since we wrapped since we wrapped Arrow. I, I miss that guy. Well, maybe he'll I listen to this. Guy. And I feel like I'll have a little bit of. In an odd way, and this isn't isn't one particular person, and despite the fact that they were a ton of work, I feel like I'll get a twinge of um, just feeling left out when uh, when the crossovers are happening this year. If in fact the crossovers are, are happening, I don't I don't know. Did how. they change the name? Wasn't it called Arrowverse? What they call it now? Yeah. May, they might be trying to call it the CW verse. Oh, well, why? That fucking, was... that, that, fucking, that fucking pissed me off. Well, it's called like, Arrowverse. Why, yeah, why change it? it? Just, I don't know. I don't just change inside of you. It's not. 
Outside, Look, honestly, yeah. it's I, I just think that that's that's probably a marketing department, you know, trying to come up, frankly, with content when they don't have any. Because I saw that ad for the first time, you know, normally, you know, on, on the B side of Comic Con, where all the shows would have would have footage, um, and 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 none of them do. I think some of them have started. Um, but I don't know. I'm so out of the mix and, you but know, you didn't and, like and, seeing and, it. You didn't like seeing it. You wanted Arrowverse. You established it. It was your show that started that. Why change the name? It bothered you a little bit. It's fine. Yeah. I don't care if they stop calling it the Arrowverse, <laughs> but you don't need to come up with a new name. I don't know. <laughs> I would. I, it's I mean, that's it's, something hey, that would annoy it's a, me it's a, too. It's allowed to. It's allowed. I left of my own volition. Why can't, right? I, I, yeah. I, but right, I'm allowed to complain about. Why that can't things bother you? I just, last one. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy D. What would you like your legacy to be? That's a hard one. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know, man. I mean, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty cemented. Um, you know, in my in my previous job, I hope that. I hope that what's happening right now is, you know, people are looking at it as a, as a, as a transition and a next step. And, um, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm really, really loving, really, really loving the work. Um, yeah, I'd like to hope that if, if people are looking at it and painting it with a broader brush, that they would just think that, you know, that's a guy that gave a hundred percent to whatever job he was doing. Um, you know, emotionally and, and mentally, and certainly as long, as long as I'm capable and, and don't get shouted down by the EPs physically. Well, so I think you've provided many, many, many years of entertainment for many people. Well, that I hope, hopefully that would be, hopefully that would be, you know, part of it too, that it does warm my heart that somewhere out there, someone had to self isolate for two weeks and rip through 170 episodes of Arrow. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Hey, Ryan, my my engineer Ryan, you can't hear him, but uh, he does this thing. He does this rap. That what's the rap called? Recap raps. Recap raps, and he did one for Arrow yeah. for all the seasons or whatever. Recap no, raps. Sh- does, oh, really? That's he Ryan. Does, it's his. Yeah. It's his? Oh man, I loved I loved those. Except except, it, and I but I could never, I could never repost them. Because every once in a while it would get a little it would get a little racy or a little um, uh, it would become a little vitriolic towards one particular character, and so let it be clear, I enjoyed the shit out of them. Like I love, I did one. He goes, they were great. He said, "Well, you just say one word." What did I say? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. He said something about Lex <laughs> Luthor in the whatever. So he put me in one of the videos. It was uh, oh, it was just a quick click. No, but those yeah, are, those are great. Keep yeah. doing those, please, Ryan. Could, uh, please. Thanks, man. Now we just we just pumped him up, <laughs> dude. I love you. I love this. It, well, lastly, you know, was I mean, you said it pretty much, but for for all those people listening, um, you know, you got COVID. You're brave enough to come out and talk about it and uh, about your experiences, and you're lucky, and you're you know, you obviously you talk about how fortunate you are to have the people around you and the resources, and you have a job and all these things. But what is what would you say to those people out there who are um, you know, just in, in broad terms, just uh, about how, you know, how you feel about COVID and, and getting it and your thoughts. Well, in the, in, in, in broad, in broad terms, um, you know, it, the, the, first of all, it's super fucking contagious. That much has been, that much has been made clear to me over the past couple of weeks. It is incredibly contagious. And um there are people walking around right now who have never been tested for it who've never gotten a symptom who are are being brazen or are not you know feeling like feeling like they want to wear a mask or not respecting social distancing guess what you've probably fucking given it to somebody and if 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 you're not if you're not careful, all right, and maybe you'll never know about it, and maybe it'll never be on your conscience, but don't don't take the chance that you're gonna fucking kill somebody. 
because you could. And um, that's not cool, <laughs> to put it mildly. This is something that, you know, I'm I'm not a big believer, unfortunately, that that there's that there's a vaccine that's just around the corner. Um, you know, even if there is, uh, I don't think that um, anything, especially in the United States of America, you know, a, a place that I live that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, a country that I love, despite the fact that I still can't vote. Um, you know, there's nothing about the past several years in this country that has given me the, the impression that even if there is a vaccine that's right around the corner, that it's going to be properly and evenly and um, you know thoroughly distributed uh, to everyone. So this is our fucking mess to clean up. And we can do it. We, you really can do it. There's just there's not there two sides. No, there's not two there, sides to this. There's just one side. There's not two. There's not. There's not two sides. There's not two sides to this. Um, you know, <laughs> it, this it, it can it can be fixed. This mess. This mess can be cleaned up. And and there's just there's there's just a few. There's a few real simple things that we have to do and we just have to buckle down and fucking do them. Yeah. And things will, they will get better. You just said but, something. You just said something. I don't know why it hit me, but you said there's a lot of people walking around there that they don't even know they have it and they're giving it to people. Right. So what that makes right. me think is a lot of times if I don't know that I'm killing someone or hurting someone, then I'm, I guess I'm not, or it's like, it's not a big, in other words, they don't realize. So they'll go be, they'll go do live their life and they'll be, and, and if they give, they don't know that they might've just killed an old woman at the, that, that it's inadvertently, but is it inadvertently? It's not, if you're not no, being it's, safe. No, it's, it's, it's not because if you're, it's not, it's not inadvertent. It, as a matter of fact, it's, it's, what's the, what's the, is it, I guess advertent <laughs> directly. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna... it's, I mean, it, no, it's, it's, it's not you right now are not making a conscious decision to follow health guidelines, follow the recommendations of health experts, not politicians, not, not business leaders, health experts. If, if you're not following those recommendations. And in fact, if you are just actively and willfully disregarding them, then you are an active and potentially lethal part of the problem. There's no fucking two ways about it. There's no way, there's no other way to think about it. Yeah. If, if you are not actively trying to stop this global pandemic, you are part of the fucking problem and you might be killing people. It's as simple as that. That sounds, it sounds morbid and it sounds hyperbolic. It's, it's, it's the, it's the truth. Ask a doctor. We had a producer come up to set on season four of Arrow. I'll never forget it. And he sat behind video of village and he, after every take, he was, he was hack coughing and he, it was clearly very, very sick. And everyone, everyone in video village was too fucking Canadian, including myself. Meaning, meaning polite and deferential to say something to tell him to get the fuck out of here. Retrospectively, oh, I that was insane. Half the crew went down with a flu that hit people yeah. as hard as a lot of a lot of people have being hit with COVID. The difference is that it has been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that this has that this virus has the capability to be deadly. It is, it is possibly deadly, and so it's possibly lethal. Number one, we know this. Number two, it's really fucking contagious. Number three, there are certain people that are really, really at risk, more so than others, if they catch it. Just 
A number just, four. Just just wear just wear just just wear yeah yeah number yeah number four. Here's number four. You have to wear fucking pants when you go out. You can't fucking free ball well, <laughs> when you go walk out outside. How about when you go to- or you'll be or you'll be or you'll be arrested. Okay, right. it's a simple societal norm. Okay, we're not going to have to do it forever. Wear a fucking mask. Number five would be even superheroes get it. That's it right there. That's it. Retired. Retired. Superheroes. Retired. Are you a retired, retired superhero? Is that what it. you are? You're retired. Yeah, I'm a retired superhero. But take <laughs> take one last take take one last thing from me. If I've had any anxiety, and I know that we 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 speak about this sometimes mm-hmm. on the pod, and and you know, and obviously, um, you know, I had a panic attack like on your podcast. Um, so, uh, take it from a guy whose only sense of anxiety and and, and panic has been the concept of contracting COVID and I've never worried about the lethal aspect of it because the numbers suggest that I will get it and maybe I'll be asymptomatic or maybe my symptoms will be light and I will come on the other side and I will be okay, which is what happened. My anxiety came from the idea that I would be letting hundreds of people down, right? It didn't even... I didn't have anxiety about the fact that I would give it to other people, which again, I possibly did, which is unsettling in and of itself. But you have to understand that because of this anxiety, I have actively, actively, actively tried to avoid contracting this virus. And guess what? I fucking got it anyway. So. Be smart. And if you're being smart, stay smart. And if you're not, you're just it's you're just you're just dragging the shit on longer for everybody else. When you told your wife, you called her up right away, and what'd you say? Oh yeah. How'd you say it? Positive. Positive. How how, how are you feeling? I said I feel fine. I'm I'm I you know, I'm I'm a little foggy. But it was it, for me. It was entirely the mental side, the emotional right. side, the 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 abrupt, abrupt, just halting of the momentum that I had personally and and professionally. Was she freaked out? No, no. It's very calm, very calm. I mean, wanted to know that I was okay, obviously, and you know. And I, I wanted to know that she was okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I wanted to, you know, I, I just, I just felt like I let a lot of people down, man. How, but I don't know I why really, you feel I that. Really I don't know why like you I feel that way. I don't know why you feel that way because you're getting tested. You're being responsible. You get tested positive. You're not letting people down. It's not your fault that you, you have this. Now, if you were cavalier and walking around and not wearing masks and, and doing and then all of a sudden you got it. Yeah, you should feel like a fucking asshole because you get you. But, but right, you didn't do it deliberately. You, I guess what happens is, and and, and this is you know, not just because you're in isolation and you have all the time in the world, but when you don't know how you got it, and you don't know when you got it, and you can't be supremely confident that you didn't give it to someone else or a whole whack of other people. Then, I gotcha. then that that plays that plays in your head, and it's supremely difficult not to become incredibly disappointed in yourself. Oh, dude, it's I'm just, I'm uh, incredibly proud works. of you. I'm proud of you for coming on and talking about it, and I and I, I really Thanks, th- I thank you for it, and I wish you the best, and I hope everybody's healthy and happy on set, and you guys get back to work, and I and, and that day comes when you're arguing, and like I want to do the stunt. Will you please just text me and say that day has come? <laughs> It's a deal, man. All right, buddy. It's Take a- care of yourself, man. All my best, and, and I'm around. All right. Thanks, All right. Rosie. I appreciate it, man. All right, buddy. Much love, man. Uh, what a treat. Wow. I mean, I, you know, I remember looking at your face, and you were just like, wow. So sometimes in these episodes, we hear news, and again, for Stephen to call me and say, hey, I want to talk about it on your show. He could have, he could have gone to anybody. He could have gone to his publicist for, the, for stars. He could have gone to the WB. He could have gone to... Uh, mm-hmm. variety and, and open it up there. And he said, Rosie, I want to come on your show. And, do it. and that, that just means a lot. It helps, you know, I always called our podcast a little, what do I, what do I call it? A little engine that could. Yeah. And what's the real thing? 
That's the right one. It is? Yeah. I don't call it that. You, you might have called it the little train that doesn't stop or little something. little train that can't fucking move. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's like uh, I love the podcast, and uh, some people do whatever they can to uh, get the word out and, 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 and get us more awareness, and uh, Stephen's one of those guys. So I really thank him not only for that, but for opening up about COVID and kind of giving us an understanding. What I gathered and I kind of talked to him about was if you're really healthy and you're you know, you, you exercise constantly. It, it might, might not bother you as much, mm-hmm. although it might. It's affected like marathon runners though. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So you just don't know one guy who's healthy as shit can die. Most likely not, but he could. Another guy, it's like, well, you're, if you're not as healthy as Steven, eh, chances are. And if you're blood type, mm-hmm. there's all these variables. So anyway, just go get checked. I mean, get tested and, um, just to be safe. Thanks uh, to all, uh, everyone who, um, excuse me, everyone who went to the stage and watched our show this past weekend. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. We dressed up, Rob and I, and uh, we did a lot of Zooms. And uh, thank you for all the support. Uh, I, I have such a passion for music. It's not something I could truly make a living at, but I found out that in the last few years that if you love something, you do it, not because you're making money, not because you're great at it, but you love doing it. And that's, that's where that comes from. And that's so important, you know, that I've, and it's nice when you can make something and people, you know, tip and bid and whatever, and you have enough money to make an album that's icing on the cake. So, uh, we've been working really hard on the album. And, uh, if you haven't heard the old album, the left on Laurel, you can find it on Spotify anywhere. You could buy it on iTunes left on Laurel saved by the ground was the album with the, my, my former band. And I uh, love them all. We worked very hard, and it was a, it's a good album. And uh, this new album will be, uh, I don't know, I still don't know the name of uh, the band. It's going to be Rosenbaum and Dancing. It's like the old uh, 70s, England Dan and John Ford Coley, Seals and Croft. Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. How about Rosenbaum Dancing? Just like a with a dash or a I just slash? don't know. If you guys got, have any ideas, please. Uh, oh, yeah. If you have any messages, go to uh, hello at inside of you podcast.com. I haven't checked in about a month and a half. I've been alone here. So uh, Oops. Uh, thanks to Stephen Amell. Also to all my patrons. If you're still listening, uh, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's I didn't know what it was. And uh, I'll say it again, but uh, I joined it. It's people who want to um, support the podcast more on the side. And I didn't think anybody would. And so many people have joined and really supported the podcast more than you know and uh it's it's incredible and it's created like a little community and people have friendships have blossomed and uh there's a lot of cool things on there so just check out patreon.com slash inside of you and just check out if it's for you i mean um it's fun and uh as i said i send a message to everybody who joins right after they join and hopefully they stick around there's merch boxes for the top tiers where I actually, I sent, I put the boxes all together. I tape them up. I pick the things. I write a handwritten note. That, that's what I do. I don't like have somebody do that. So if you think I do that, then you don't know me. God dang it. Should I ask you if you can name 20 yet? Or should I wait 20? till I say them and see if you can say 20 after I name them? <sighs> Nancy D, Mary B, Leah S, Trisha F, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Lauren G, Nico P, Angelina G, Robin S, Jerry W, Emily, Bob B. You're thinking, I know. I'm going fast. So you got to get 20. Robert I, Jason W, Stephen J, Kristen K, Amelia O, Allison L, Jess J. I know my buddy Ethan and Alex are listening. I hope they're listening. They may not be, but. They really got a kick out of it. They're like, I loved how you did that thing with Ryan, how he has to learn some. That's a cool way to kind of incorporate. You should do that. God, now I'm nervous. Allison L, Jess J, Lucas M, Raj C, Joshua D, Emily S, CJP, Samantha M, Hamza B. You won't forget that one. Jennifer N, Jackie P, Stacy L, Carly H, Jennifer S, Janelle B, Carrie B, Tabitha 272, not to be confused with. Tabitha 273. Kimberly E, Crystal H, Mike E, Marissa, Nalina, Laura Mira, Beth B, Santiago M, Sarah F, Chad W, Leanne P, Roshan, Ray A, Maya P, Megan J, Megan J, Maddie S, Tiffany I, Kendrick F, Ashley E, Margie M, Thomas T, Matt W, Belinda N, Benjamin R, Lisa J, Kevin V, Robert S, James R, Chris H, Snow R, Sean V, Anusha W, Osborne. By the sword of Asbjorn. By the sword of Osborne. 
Quit trying to do things to remember those names. Dave H, Samantha S, Spider-Man Chase, Sheila, Sheila, Sheila G. Oh, Sheila. Uh, Alyssa C, Jacob H, Misha H, William H. Wow. Deb A and Tom N. Mm -hmm. A lot of new uh, patrons. Patrons. Mm Mm-hmm. So thank you. And everybody gets a, a, a 15% off the store on the Inside You Online store. Just go to, just put Rosie Pants 1. All right. Let's see if, uh, I, I couldn't do this. My memory's so bad, but uh, let's even get 20. Let's, 20. Uh, let's go. God. All right. We'll go as fast as I can. Let's see if Ryan can do it. This is called, <clears throat> uh, we have to have a name for this. This is called Memo Ryan the. Memo Ryan the Patrons. <laughs> patrons. Memo Ryan the Patrons. <clears throat> okay. And now. Tabitha 272, Asbjorn, Hamza B, Bob B, Robert I, Emily S, Tiffany I, uh, Leanne P, Maya P, uh, Kendrick F. That's 10. Kendrick F you pulled out. Kendrick Kendrick's F. a hard name to That's remember. That's a good name. Well, I mean, it's a good I, name. I listened to Kendrick Lamar yesterday, so that helped. Oh. Um, Okay. Ryan Patron. Oh shit. Emily S. Did I say Emily S. yet? No, you said Emily. There's two Emilys. Right. But Emily S. is correct. But yeah, you got it. So you have two Emilys. So those count too. Okay. So that's all right. Eleven. Raj. Um. By the power. Oh, I said Osborne. Oh, you did. Okay. And those. Um. Spider-Man Chase. Yeah. Tom, there's a Tom. I don't, I don't remember the last. There's a Tom. Yep. Uh, Kristen K. Mm-hmm. Uh, what if we call it 15 this time? I think that's fair. All right. It's Tom N, by the way. Tom N. My memory's not great, so uh, as, as, as much as I know, when you put the pressure on, it's like if I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, I'd shit my pants. <laughs> uh, this has been fun. I like this. Uh, uh, Memo Ryan patrons. <laughs> Next time, Ryan will get 20 correct, but no studying, Ryan. Thank you for listening to Stephen and Mel. Please subscribe if you're still hanging around. Uh, send messages. I love you all. Thank you for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you. And, uh, you know, um, any of the products and sponsorships or whatever I, we had today. And if you want to try it out, give it a shout. Give it a try. It certainly helps the podcast. Thank you for the support. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Make sure you watch on YouTube, too. Also, thank you. Ryan? Thank you. Thank you.